almost fried standing out on that highway waiting for the bus. And when it did come, I thought for sure it didn't see me. Oh, I'm Miss TV like in Television Smith. That sweet little girl yours? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Either the bus was late or I was early. I've been standing out on that highway for an hour. I've been visiting friends. And now I'm going to see my married daughter that lives the other side of Houston. You've been riding the bus long? Oh, about uh, two hours. Where are you going? We're going to Columbus. Well, where's that? I've never heard of it. It's between uh, Houston and Corpus. Oh. Houston. We're going there to meet my daddy. I have never seen him before. Where's he been, in the army? No. No, he's been uh, away on a trip. <laughs> Must have been a pretty far trip. Yes, and it was. Well, excuse us. I'm going to get my little girl to take a nap. Uh, certainly. They ought to nickname you Miss Wiggletail, honey. <laughs> you all. Look out the window to your right. That's the start of the Salada prison farm. But there are some of them convicts working away. Mama, what's a prison farm? Well, uh... It's where convicts are put to pay for their sins, honey. What's a convict? A convict is somebody who's broken the law and has to be punished, honey. A friend I used to visit lives near the farm, and she says she never draws a peaceful breath summer or winter for fear one of them convicts will escape some night and cut her throat. Still say she don't want to see you. Did you tell her I was here twice yesterday? Yes, sir. Well, Catherine, you go upstairs right now, and you tell her I'm here, and you tell her I wanna, I wanna know if I've done anything wrong. Because if I have, I'd like to know what it is that I've done wrong. She say, you never would have got drunk, stabbed that man, and wound up in the pen if you hadn't have been playing in a hockey town. Just a minute. Give her this letter? No, sir. He ain't gonna do no good. Now, you listen to me, Catherine. This letter's important. I want you to try to get her to read it. You see, if there was anybody else, there's nobody else in the world could get to her, except you. 
Now, will you please give it to her? No. All right. I'll try, but I ain't gonna guarantee nothing. When you woke me up this morning, I was feeling my enemy. You didn't bring my coffee, and you spoiled a damn good dream. So baby, you better treat me right. Baby, better treat me right. I will do what you want me to, baby, if you treat me right. Bring me bacon when I'm hungry. Bring me laughing when I'm feeling sad. Bring me water when I get thirsty. Bring me loving when I'm feeling bad. So baby, you better treat me right. Yeah, you better treat me right. I will be what you want me to. Baby, you can treat me right. Now, baby, if you want some loving, this is all you gotta do. Just to come on, take good care of me. And I'll take a good care of you. So baby, you better treat me right. Yeah, baby, better treat me right. I will do what you want me to. Baby, if you treat me right. Baby, if you treat me right. Baby, if you treat me right. That singing, boy. Fine. I could sing all night. Man, I feel good. Hmm. Buy you a drink? Come on. I ain't gonna tell Judge Ewan on you. I can't. I'm on duty. Let me tell you, when you get off duty, a little friend sitting over here, and she's got a friend at home, and she's lonesome. Now, why don't you let me fix up a date with you? We could have a very good time. Well, thanks. Hey, man, when are you gonna start having some fun for yourself? You know, I'm beginning to worry about you. Thanks, Henry, but I'm all right. <laughs> Good old boy. If it had been him instead of his wife that died, she'd be in here the next night trying to pick up some man.
you tell me where I could look for a place to rent, please? No, ma'am, I sure can't. Slim, can you help this lady find a place to rent? What are you looking for? A, a house, a room, apartment? Oh, a, a room. Excuse me, I gotta sit down. Can I have a piece of chewing gum? Sure you can, honey. I think your jaws would be tired. She chewed up two packages since we left Tyler. Oh, honey, the gum's all gone. Come on. We'll buy some. Will you come with me? Yes, ma'am. Sir, Margaret Rose. Your ma'am, your mom, and your sir, this gentleman. Yes, sir. Uh, you're not taking nickel, Margaret Rose. And treat Tom me. No, no. Uh, I, I have it right here. Thank you. There you go. It's a real nice little girl you got there. Thank you. She's just the sunshine of my life. You want a room by the week or the month? Oh, by the week. You see, I'm meeting my husband here. I, I don't rightly know just when. I mean, not down to the exact minute, but I look for him early part of next week. Don't you and your little girl want something to eat first, Mrs.? Uh, Thomas. Uh, no, thank you. Not for me. What about you, Margaret Rose? No. I guess we're both just too excited to eat. You see, I just decided yesterday. I was working in, in Tyler, and I got laid off because things were slow at the drive-in. So I just... I just wrote to Henry, and I said, I'm sick unto death of Tyler. Would you say your husband's first name was? Henry. Henry Thomas. He was born and raised here. Do you know him? We grew up together. Oh, well, my goodness. He's here now, Miss Thomas. He's here? Yes, ma'am. Did you hear that, Margaret Rose? Your daddy's here already. Well, do you know where he's living so my little girl and I can go over there? I take him myself. It's just down the street. Thank you. Scared me out of my wits. I'm sorry. Is Henry up yet? No. What's wrong? Well, a, a woman and a little girl came into the bus station a little while ago. She said she was married to him. They're out in the yard. My goodness. He never mentioned he had a wife to me, did he to you? No, ma'am. Well. I think we just better wake him up. Henry? Do 
you know where he could be? No. There's been a couple of nights he hasn't been here. He hasn't been drinking, though, Slim. Except for one night. And he was so mortified the next day. He begged me not to tell Miss Kate, which I didn't. Of course, Miss Kate told him in front of me that if he ever took another drop of whiskey, she was through with him forever, and she would ask the sheriff to send him back to the pen, which he might. Yes, ma'am. Well, we see every day where whiskey leads. I told Mr. Tillman when he was drinking, I said, you might as well take a gun and blow your brains out as to keep on this way. Yes, ma'am. Of course, he was one of those with character enough to stop. He marched in one morning and he said, Miss Tillman, I'm quitting. And he did. And he took the whiskey bottles and he threw them in the yard and he busted them against the fig tree. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me, I'm going to take Miss Thomas and see if I can find him. Yes, sir. Georgia, uh, how'd you get, how'd you get here? Well, I just came in on the bus. Uh, I just heard you were here. I, I met uh, Mr. Slim, and he told us. You're looking good, Georgia. Thank you, Henry. You're looking just fine too. I guess you're kind of surprised to see me here in town. Yes, I am. You know, I wrote your letter yesterday. I let you know I got out, of, got out a little bit early. Did you get it? Oh, no. Yeah, well, it probably went on ahead to Tyler today. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Margaret Rose. Uh, Henry, this is Margaret Rose. Ride. Yeah, well, uh, come on and meet the people I work for. Mr. and Miss Tillman, I'd like you to meet my wife, my little girl. Gotta do. How are you? Afraid I'm gonna have to take the day off, find them some place to live, but uh, I'll make it up to you tomorrow if that's all right. All right. May I see you a minute, Henry? Yes, ma'am. Excuse me. Pleased to meet you, Miss Thomas. Okay. Does Miss Kate know you've got a wife and a child? No, ma'am. Why didn't you tell her? Well, I didn't say anything when we first got married, because I wasn't sure how she was going to take it. Then after I uh, got sent to prison, I didn't say anything then, because I wasn't sure my wife was going to forgive me for being sent to the pen. And then I, well, I wrote to her, and I begged her to take me back, and she didn't say anything one way or the other. And then she just showed up right here without any warning whatsoever. Well, I told Miss Kate I'd give you work and help you straighten out, Henry, and I want to. But it's very hard if you're going to have secrets. I don't have any secrets from you. Not anymore. I swear to you. I hope so. Well, I guess we better get going. <laughs> well, there's my Cadillac car. We'll see y'all. Bye, y'all. Bye. I'll get there. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Slam. It's all right. Oh, Miss Kate, be surprised. She's a funny woman, Miss Kate Dawson. Meet her and talk with her, you'd think she was the gentlest little soul alive. 
Never raised a voice above a whisper. Well, maybe she was most of the time. The way she beat that Thomas boy, she beat him till all the neighbors complained. Said she had to whip him. She had to, to break his spirit. You know about me being a penitentiary? Oh, no, no. Listen, Georgette, I want to thank you for all you've done, all the hard work, taking care of the baby, paying that lawyer the money to get my parole. I'll make it up to you. I know you will. Anyway, the time's gone by and we're together again. Sometimes I didn't think it ever would. You know, Georgette, everybody's trying to talk me into going to San Antonio or Nashville or Hollywood trying to sell my song to a recording company. Oh, now, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. You know, that's another reason why I didn't want you and the baby to come for a while. I was trying to get as much money as I could ahead and then go on to Tennessee or California and try and sell my songs. Well, I still think you should go. I, I don't want us to stop you from doing anything. Yeah, well, that's, it's a lot easier said than done. Who's money? Of course, the way things are right now, I have to get my room and my board at Miss Tillman's free plus my salary, and now, of course, Gonna have to worry about our food. And I'll ring. I, I'm sorry. I. I guess I shouldn't have uh, just come on this way, but I, I wrote to you saying that if I didn't hear any different, I'd just come on. I didn't, so naturally. It'll all work out. I'm sure it will. Yes, ma'am. Rose, um, I know that when we left Tyler, I told you I hope I'd never have to go to work again and leave you. Yes, ma'am. But, well, your daddy's written some beautiful songs. And if he can get to Nashville or Hollywood to sell them, it might make him famous. So, well, I was wondering if you'd take it too hard if I went back to work for just a little while. Helped him earn the money to get to California. I mean, I hadn't said anything to him about it till I talked to you first. How long are you going to work? Not too long. How long? A month, two months. I won't do it at all if I can't find some nice lady for you to stay with while I'm working. All right. Tell me 
about when you met Daddy? Oh, honey, you've heard that story a hundred million times. Please. All right. It was a Saturday, back in my hometown of Love Lady. And he was riding through town with a bunch of boys. And one of the boys knew the girl I was with, so they stopped the car and we were introduced. And, uh... <laughs> then the next night, I went to a dance. And there he was. He was singing with a string band, and he asked me to dance. So I said I would. And we'd dance a while, and then he'd sing a while. It was love at first sight, I guess. He had a girl called Sis Roberts. <laughs> she was just crazy about him. And her papa offered to set him up in a grocery store just to get him to marry her. <laughs> They say Sis Roberts stood to her bed and cried for a week when she heard I had him. <laughs> but she's still crying, too. Oh. I... I, I was just, uh, telling the baby about how we met. She loves to hear about it. I like to hear about it, too. And here's the dance posters. Oh. Kind of good looking there, ain't it? Margaret Rose, come look. Hey, Joe Jet. Remember that? Oh, my sure. Why, that looks as good as it did when you had it back in love, lady. Oh, um, Henry, she wants to know if you play and sing something for her. Sure, I will. Okay, now. Everybody sit down. Well, babe, you better treat me right. Yeah, you better treat me right. Well, I will do what you want me to. Maybe you be treating me right. Well, how'd you like that? It's fine. How'd you like it? Oh, just fine. Henry, Margaret Rose and I have been talking it over. And I've decided I'm going to get a job at a drive-in here and help you get the money to go to California. No, I don't think so. But I want to. I don't think so, Georgia. Henry, I want to do it. After all, it would be helping us, too, if you went to Hollywood and was a big success. Wouldn't it, honey? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I appreciate that. And I'm going to be a success. You'll see. People are going to hear about Henry Thomas. I know that. I knew that first time I heard you say. Honey, this is a song I wrote for you and your mama. And this is a song that's going to make me famous. Someday, after it's recorded, and I'm rich, and maybe I'll be a big movie star like Elvis Presley. And you, me, and your mama, we're gonna live in Hollywood. And we're gonna go to all the opening of my pictures in a big white Cadillac car. And we're not gonna have a care in this world. Just writing songs, singing songs. And make a moving picture. Oh, my love is my light, 
shining so bright shine for me little light little light shine for me my love knows a place that i never have seen she'll show me the way to a valley that's green my love walks beside me a shine and so bright i need her to guide me my love is my light my eyes crying oh Hush, Margaret Rosa. I'm happy. I'm just, just crying because I'm so happy. Why are you so happy? Oh, well, because uh, everybody's been so good to us. And your daddy's home. Oh, my love. My light shining so bright, shine for me, little light, little light, shine for me. I was back in the pen. Oh. They told me I could leave. But I'd have to let myself out. Every time I got that door halfway open, it slammed shut in my face. God, they're all laughing at me. And now it's cursing back in. I'm, I'm just going to go check on the baby.
Slim. What are you doing here so late? Well, I'm just about done. I'm not going to answer it. Miss Kate Dawson. She's been calling me night and day ever since Henry's come home. Complaining to me about what he's been doing and, and not doing. As if I was responsible for her having him. Someone ought to go over there and talk to her. She's all stirred up, threatening to call the sheriff, get him to take Henry back to the penitentiary. That's where I found Henry Thomas that first night. Sitting right there. I was on my way home about this same time of night. I looked over and saw this little boy sitting there. Ryan. How did Miss Kate ever come to get him? Well, the sheriff thought he'd have to send him on to an orphanage, but then Miss Kate heard about him, and we gave him to her. Seemed like the best thing to do at the time. I sometimes wish I never heard of Miss Kate Dawson or Henry Thomas either. Sometime today, you better stop in and see Miss Kate. Sure. See, listen, uh, are you going on home now? Uh-huh. Well, uh, would you mind? You want me to take your little girl with me? I sure would appreciate it. Save us a trip, honey. OK? Honey, you know Miss Clarence is going to look after you? Mm -hmm. Or Mr. Slim's her brother? What's that around his waist? Oh, that's a gun. Does he shoot people with it? <laughs> no, honey. Is he a convict? No, he's a deputy. Will you come with me, young lady? All right. Let me kiss her. Bye-bye. Guess I'd better get ready for work. Did Miss Kate, she tell you she wanted to see me herself? I just think you better get over there. The judge talked to her last night, and she's all worked up about something, threatening to call the sheriff. <laughs> okay. Thanks, man. Anything personal in here. We keep it locked. Thank you. Come on. Here you are. There's a mirror in here if you want to comb your hair. Did you have to wear a uniform in the drive-in? Oh, well, uh, first place I worked, we did. Second place, just our own clothes. 
one place wanted me to wear a costume, and I said I wouldn't do that. I said I was there to work, not put on a show. <laughs> Oh, did you and your husband own a house back in Tyler, or did you rent? Well, uh, my husband wasn't with us in Tyler. We hadn't seen him for a while until we came here. But uh, we were all planning on being together for a long time, and now we're just as happy as we can be. Me and my husband and my little girl. <laughs> I was, I was saying to him just last night that it was worth waiting a long time to be this happy. And he agreed. He said, he said, nothing can ever separate us from him again. That's nice. Yeah. See that tree? Your daddy and I once built a tree house way up in the top of that tree. How'd you do it? I don't know. Just climbed up there and built it. You can climb up there now? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not now. <laughs> Your daddy used to love to come to eat supper with us over here, Margaret Rose. The lady he stayed with wasn't very much of a cook, so they lived out of cans most of the time. <laughs> Every night when I was fixing supper, he'd come in and say, something sure smells good. And I'd ask him if he'd like to stay to supper, and he'd say, oh, well, I don't mind. And I'd tell him to go call Miss Kate. And sometimes she'd let him stay, and sometimes she wouldn't. What's Mr. Slim going in the garden for, Miss Love? To take some flowers to his wife's grave. There are dead people in there. They won't hurt you. How do you know? <laughs> because I've lived next to it all these years, and they never hurt me. Do I be scared to go in there? Slim said that uh, Miss Kate's still all upset. Did you give her that letter like I told you? Yeah, and she read your letter. She said she is mad because you stopped up that string band of yours again and playing for dances. She said when she agreed to have you come back here on your parole, you promised her that you was going back to night school. Yeah, I know I did. Well, she's going to tell the sheriff to see if he can make you keep your promises. Hey, Catherine. She know about my wife and my little girl. She does. Well, uh, now you go up and you tell her that I can't go to night school, that I've got to work day and night at anything I can to support my wife and my little girl. If you ain't quit that band by tomorrow, she's gonna get this sheriff to see if he can straighten you out. You quit that band, cause she's gonna see to it that you go to the pen. Well, I'm not gonna quit, and you can tell her that. You tell her yourself. All right, I will.
I'm not gonna quit my music. Do you hear that, old lady? I'm not gonna quit my music. I was expecting you this morning. Aren't you going to scrub my kitchen for me? It's so dirty. Yes, ma'am. I was just coming over to do it right now. All right. I have some soup here for Miss Kate. We'll be back in a little. Georgia, I'm not going to be able to have supper with you all tonight. I got to get over to Cotton, get it set up. All right. You know what time you'll be home? Come on over here. <laughs> I find the china berry tree at Miss Claire's today. Wish we had one in our yard to climb. Well, we're going to get one. Miss Clara's going to send over some plants for us, and maybe some of them will be trees. You know, I'd like to have all kinds of trees. A, a china berry tree, and a sycamore, and an oak tree, and a fig tree, and flowers everywhere. I was just, uh, just telling Margaret Rose about all the, the trees and flowers we're going to put in the yard. Ah! Uh -huh. 
going. Hmm? Come on, I'll buy you a drink. Hey, partner, just go in there. I was singing. This guy started howling, and I went for him. I'm quitting the string band. Miss Kate didn't think I ought to take up music again. I ought to go to night school and learn a trade. Well, maybe she's right. I'll write my songs on the side. But that's all. No more singing. No more string band and, and no more guitar. I'll play tomorrow night at the wagon wheel. Because I promise. But after that, no more. back to that pen.
Hello, Mr. Slam. These are the plants that my sister asked me to bring to you. Oh. They all marked. Well, thank you so much. We're going to my daddy's dance tonight. I told Henry that I hadn't danced in so long, I'm sure I'd forgotten how. My daddy didn't approve of dancing, but I went anyhow. You like to dance? I used to. Don't you go anymore, either? Uh, no, ma'am. I haven't gone in about uh, two years. So not to dance, anyway. Oh. Can you sing so? No. My daddy can. I know that. Oh, look at those birds. I wonder what kind they are. It's hard to say. Too small for geese. Wonder where they're going. Well, the winter's coming on. They're probably flying on down further south to Mexico to get away from the cold weather. Oh, does it get cold here? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Sometimes it freezes. Of course, not all the birds fly away, and, and some new ones come down from the north to spend the winter. I think our little house is going to be warm, though, don't you? I think so. Pretty sad. He ran into the door in the dark. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm not gonna be playing with dance bands anymore. Went on to night school. Write my songs in my spare time. Uh -huh. I brought you some tools here in case you needed something to plant for you. Be sure you. Keep those plants good and wet now until you get ready to plant them. I will. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Tell Miss Claire I said thank you. I will. We'll do it first thing in the morning. Can't we plant one now? Sure we can. What kind do you want? What kinds are they? Well, we got a china berry tree and a peach tree. I want the china berry tree. famous but who can ever tell I do not know what waits for me maybe heaven maybe hell baby the rain must fall baby the wind must blow Wherever my heart leads me, baby, I must go. Mama, tell me a story. Hello, honey. What do you want to hear? A fairy story or a real one? A real one. All right. Uh, once upon a time, on a cotton farm outside of Love Lady, they lived a little girl with her mother and daddy. What was her name? Who, oh, honey? The little girl. Oh, Georgette Price. That was you, wasn't it? Yes, ma'am. OK, 
chévere. It's dry, we're gonna have to remember to water those every single day. You won't let me forget it now, will you? Little peaches, do we have peaches? Sure will. And in the spring, that chinaberry tree's gonna have blossoms. On warm spring nights, we're gonna sit out here, you and your daddy and me, and we're just gonna smell the perfume from the chinaberry tree. Kate's dying. Gotta get over there right away.
could and run. You never have been. You're not worth killing. Remember the first time I saw Miss Kate. The judge brought me up here to the house. And she was standing right here in this doorway watching us. We came up the walk. She said, well, how do you do, boy? I couldn't say nothing. I just kind of hung my head. Then she laughed, and then the judge laughed. And then he walked down, and he got in his car, and he just drove away. Took me by the hand and uh, <laughs> brought me in here. Listen, I hope you don't mind, but I have to tell them if they take you on to work. Is that okay? All right. Hey, listen. Henry, I just wanted to tell you about Miss Kate's affairs. She had no money left. Her house will have to be sold to pay her debts. She uh, requested in her will that her family silver be left to Mrs. Tillman. But I'm sure whatever other personal things of hers you want, Miss Kate would like you to have. Thank you, sir. I uh, hope you'll be able to go through her things as soon as possible because we have to put the house on the market right away. Yes, sir, I will. I hear you're going back to school. Well, I've been considering it. 
I've, uh, I've been discussing with some of the boys in the string band. Of course, uh, they're trying to talk me out of it. See, they argue that uh, I got no right to give up my singing and my playing, and that I got a real talent, and I ought to turn my back on it. Of course, I, I know Miss Kate didn't want me to play in the orchestra, and I promised her I wouldn't. But, well, I'd kind of like to try it now, Judge. Henry, you'll save yourself a lot of trouble if you'll just go on and go to school. The sheriff will make you, anyway. He promised Miss Katie would before she died. But he can't make me. You're on parole, Henry. Yeah, but I feel strong inside of myself now. Strong enough to just stand up to any kind of temptation. Now, you take my advice. Stay out of these places. Go on to school. No, sir, I'm not gonna do it. Now, you listen. Time's moving fast, and I gotta get ahead. And I'm not gonna give up my string band. And I'll tell the sheriff that.
Oh. Oh. Honey, I'm sorry I'm late. Your daddy didn't come for me at work, so I... I just started walking and then I got lost and... He hasn't been here, has he? No, mm -hmm. You all right? Yes, ma'am. Well, you better get on home. I gotta get my dog. Go get him. Tell Miss Clara and Mr. Slim we're leaving. I just wanted to tell you they have Henry in jail and he's quieting down now. Yes, sir. Well, 
I'll be going now. Thank you for coming by. Get you into me, Georgia. Why do I do these things? I swear I'd rather be dead and be locked up again. enough money left to get me started. Hey, Georgia, do you think the sheriff would let me out so I could go say goodbye to the baby? If you'd let me see her, there would be no need for any kind of handcuffs or, or just anything like that. Rose, out yonder. Hello, Miss Clara. Hello, Henry. You by surprise, didn't you, sugar? You best come and kiss me goodbye now. I have to go.
Henry, she, uh, she wants you to sing the song you wrote for her. Mommy inside? Yes, sir. I would hate to try and go around the world with that old suitcase. I don't think it'd hold out, do you? It's a good day for traveling. Yes, it is.
Mm. When are we going again? We're going to the valley, honey. Does it ever get cold there in the winter? No. No, it's warm. Is it far from Tyler? Yes, it's very far. Love lady to Tyler. From Tyler to Columbus. And from Columbus to the valley. Margaret Rose, we sure do get around. <laughs> <laughs>